Okay. Uh, so today we will construct uh, VOMA modules. But let's recall but before doing that that when we have a Lie algebra G, the universal enveloping algebra. U of G is defined to be uh, the tensor algebra quotient by uh, the J. J is the ideal generated by uh, things like X tensor Y, Y tensor X, XY for all XY in G. In other words, basically the elements are tensors, but we insist that this we give some relation so that this is equal to or x, y, we just forced this to be equal to this. That And it is a well-defined algebra and it's called the universal enveloping algebra. And today's goal is to construct Bama module. Okay, so section 9.5, construction of Verma module. So today we will, we will see uh, many proofs. Okay? <laughs> I will uh, try to go over the proof um, slowly so that uh, understandable. So let's see. So a proof of uh, a uh, subspace I of this universal enveloping algebra of G, uh, we say that this is a left idea. This is a usual definition in uh, algebra if uh, alpha beta is in this subspace for all alpha in U for and for all beta in I. So whenever you multiply alpha, so beta is on the right, on the left, uh, so, uh, sorry, so it's on the right, right. So whenever we multiply anything on the left, it's still uh, inside the subspace, then we say that it's left idea. So usual definition in abstract algebra. And the left idea, when you say the left idea, generated by a set of vectors, say beta j, in UG is the smallest left idea, left idea containing this set. This set. So this is again a common uh, definition. Something gen generated by this set that means the smallest uh, idea or left idea, depending on what we are considering, containing that specific set. So typical element, so the, in fact, it is the space we can express. It is the space of vectors uh, in this form, summation alpha j, beta j, with finite sum, where of course alpha j is in any element is an any element in the U UG, and beta j is from I. So you take any, some element in J, take any element in UG, and then you just take a finite sum of them, and element looks like this. Uh, and definition. On I sub mu, mu is a weight or element in uh, Cartan sub algebra. This, by definition, left idea in the universal enveloping algebra generated by this set uh, H minus mu H1. Notice that 1 is in the uh, UG, 
UG because zero tensor, it is inside this zero tensor where H is in the Cartan sub algebra where alpha is a plus positive root. By the way, the idea is somewhat similar to uh, the construction of the universal enveloping algebra. So for th we want this to be a um, module or representation which is a high suede cyclic with high suede mu. So we, we will do this by taking the quotient of the universal enveloping algebra uh, by some uh, left idea so that we have those properties that we want uh, by definition, like we had this somewhat like a by uh, uh, definition. So if you, the definition is, um, yeah, I think I wish I had more space, but let's see. The Verma module with highest weight, highest weight Wait, mu is denoted uh, v uh, w mu, which is the quotient of the universal enveloping algebra by this left idea. But because this is a module, uh, we want to we have to give the module structure with uh, u g module structure v or u g action uh, given by um, alpha, okay. Alpha beta equals alpha beta. That's the definition of the Verma module. So it's the uh, quotient by this left idea. Because it's a quotient, we uh, we rep we will write an element here using a bracket. So bracket, this means, uh, this is, it's actually it's an equivalent class. The equivalent class represented by element A. So A is an element in, oh sorry, alpha is an element in UG. So this is, um, okay, by, let's write over here. So alpha, W, U, mu is the, element represented by alpha. Okay. And the action is just the action in multiplication in UG. Okay. So it's kind of natural uh, natural action. And this is well defined because I mu is a left idea. Okay, so this is the Verma module. All right, uh, a few remarks. First, uh, this is well defined. The action is well defined. So whenever we define something on uh, quotient space, we have to show that it's well defined. But this is. Uh, um, This is really uh, simple because if beta equals beta prime, if this, what does that mean? Beta minus beta prime is inside this I mu because mu, uh, Verma module is UG quotient I mu. Th they are equal, that means their difference is inside this uh, quotient or the thing that we are quotienting. And we need to show that this, if this is equal, if, is this equal? We have to show. But this, by definition, alpha beta. This, by definition, alpha beta prime. So this means this means that alpha beta minus alpha beta prime is in I mu. But it is there because alpha you can factor this like this because it's a left idea. This is already inside I mu. No matter what you multiply on the left, it's still inside I mu, so it's true. So 
So be, this is actually a general situation for whenever we have a um, left idea, and then it's a, it gives us a well-defined action. And also, uh, this is indeed an action. Indeed, this gives indeed an action. In other words, alpha, beta, dot, gamma is equal to alpha, uh, beta, gamma. You have to have this. But this is true because what, what, what is this? This is by definition, and this is by definition, beta, gamma, and then again, this is alpha. But they're in fact the same. The inside things, they are the same because of the uh, associativity. So this is a well-defined, uh, we, we can give this well-defined module structure. And this, so it, this is indeed a uh, representation of UG, or equivalently, representation of G, okay? Representation of UG is the same thing as a representation of G. Or, or representation is the, the module. G module is the same thing as representation, only we say um, they only have the several different names, but they're all equal. So we define the Vorma module. So what do you want to do with it? We want to show that this has these nice properties that we want it to have. So here are the theorems. Theorem uh, 9.12. First, uh, V naught, which is by definition the element represented by 1. This is a non-zero element in the Vorma module. Second, uh, W u is mu is a highest weight cyclic representation with highest weight mu and highest weight vector v0. This is what we want. We will prove this today, but we will uh, define a few more terminologies. By the way, uh, which one do you think uh, is easier to prove, first and the second? First looks uh, pretty simple because all we need to do is that this is non-zero, right? Something is not equal to zero. But uh, interestingly, this is uh, more difficult. It takes more time to prove this. The second is quite simple, but sometimes when we have some quotient stuff showing that this is non-zero, that means one is not in I mu. So, you know, this is what? UG quotient i mu. So this is equivalent to saying that 1 as an element in ug is not in i mu. We have to show that and that that's more um, difficult than 2. Mm, but we will uh, postpone this proof a little later. So uh, this gothic n plus this is by definition a product or the direct sum of for all positive roots, the root space, the root space for all positive roots. And similarly, n minus, by definition, all negative roots, we, uh, we direct some the negative uh, root spaces. And b, this gothic b, that is the Cartan subalgebra, direct sum with n plus. And recall, G is decomposed into uh, direct sums like this, root space decomposition, right? So using these three, you can say that this is in fact N minus direct sum H, direct sum N plus, right? So they are really the same thing. Because this is H, we can separate this into two parts like this and this. And since 
we know we have shown this chapter in chapter 7 maybe this is a subspace of G alpha plus beta right that means B and N plus and N minus they are all uh, sub algebras or least uh, li sub algebras least of to emphasize least sub algebras of G because they form our algebra and it's a sub uh, it's a subspace of this because if alpha beta are positive alpha plus beta is also positive so either this part or either this part is zero or it's contained in this all right <coughs> so this fact is will be used because you know we can construct the universal enveloping algebra for G, but we will also consider universal enveloping algebra for B because B is also a Lie algebra. We can do this, okay? In the proof of this, and moreover, so this part is pretty nice. We can say that this is really a high weight cyclic representation, but we can also say uh, that theorem thirteen we can specify the some basis of this so if y1 dot 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 ym if this form a basis for this n minus then pi oh i think i didn't write this but okay let's try it. M V zero and J all non negative integers. This form a basis for the Verma module. Okay, what is this? Verma module is a module, it is a representation, so this means the representation there. So or this is the representation uh, W Verma module. Because we have action, so the G action, this or X, is really the G action, the U G action, or the same as same thing. Because we have uh, U G action on this module. It's a module after all, so we have module structure. So this. Is a representation denoted like that, but this is really the action uh, like that. So pi mu is representation of this on this space with that action. Okay, mm, so this is nice because we can specify a basis for this space. Okay. Mm. Uh, let's note something here. Since n minus is a Lie algebra, like I said, uh, we can consider its universal enveloping algebra. For any uh, Lie algebra, we can consider the universal en enveloping algebra, and by the PBW theorem, Brancare Borkovit theorem, UN minus has basis because this looks quite similar to us, right? Uh, Y1, N1, dot dot dot, YM, NM, and J, all non negative integers. So we have a natural a vector space isomorphism uh, between uh, u and minus and the Verma module. So Verma module is a vector space is isomorphic to this because of this. 
All we need to do is to send uh, this basis element. Just send it to this, right? M and M V zero. So this is the highest weight vector. So it generates. Uh, so everything of this form will be inside this, but this is indeed a basis. That's what this theorem is saying. Okay, so we'll prove these two theorems. So the Vama module and its structure. Or equivalently, uh, it's really the same thing as, because we will extend this to uh, line linearly, it's the same thing. Like sending this element to this uh, element applied to V0. OK. Uh, so to prove these two theorems, we will first prove uh, lemma. Lemma. 9.14, uh, let's define uh, J mu, the I left idea, in the universal enveloping algebra of B, which is uh, sub-algebra of UG, right? generated by this, the same uh, set that we have seen. This H in the Cartan subalgebra union. This. So let's uh, denote this by uh, this star. Then the th lemma says that one is not in J mu. That's the statement. This left idea does not contain one. So one is an uh, element here that's not there. Proof. OK? So we will consider this one-dimensional representation. Define the one-dimensional representation, say, sigma mu of this real algebra B. So one dimensional, so the vector space acting, uh, this vector, uh, the vector space where this is acting, uh, act, acting, must be one dimensional, so it's going to be C, right? Vector space C. Why? Uh, C, because what is B? B is a direct sum of H and N plus. So we can write always N plus element plus uh, a element from H. So this is, because the one dimensional representation, this will give us just a number, complex number. That's, by definition, we do like that. So where, of course, X is in N plus, H is in the Cartan subalgebra. And this is a, representation, one-dimensional representation. What does a uh, representation mean? Re especially representa representation is what? Homomorphism from uh, Lie algebra to uh, endomorphism of a vector space, where we have this uh, Lie algebra structure there. Mm. Okay, so just to make it uh, more understandable, in other words, so Lie algebra acting on this, that means if you have some C constant or complex number, we have to give another constant number. That is just by multiplying this. That's what I mean by the representation. Uh, C is 
So it acts on C. So it is a representation. But of course, we have to show that why is this a representation? Then this is a representation. Why? Because let's just check. All we need to do is to show that x1 plus h1, x2 plus h2, whether this is equal to the desire, the bracket. But just to com let's just compute this. So by uh, linearity, you have x1, x2 plus x1, x h2 plus h1, x2 plus h1, h2, right? But this part is in uh, n plus. Everything here is in n plus. But except this, this is in h. Right? So by definition, we will, uh, we only consider this because we only consider this part. This by definition, h1, h2. But actually, it is in h, but it is 0. Because it's commutative, this is 0. So actually, this is 0. So this part is 0. But we have to show that this is equal to what? Uh, sigma mu. Right? This is what a representation means. But this is 0, so this has to be 0 for that, so that they are equal. But why is this 0? Why is this 0? Because what is the space? Uh, what is this? There's a c complex number, complex number. What is the bracket of a complex number? Complex number is just a dimension one. Dimension one, Lie algebra is always commutative, so no matter what you have for here, it's zero. So dimension one, always commutative. Because more, because A in dimension one, this is, of course, zero commutative. So it is our representation. That's, that's completely fine. And but we have to okay, I think I have to we will show that uh, oh by the way, because this is a representation by uh, proposition nine point eight, the representation uh, of B extends to a representation, say, tilde of the universal enveloping algebra. So representation of B is really the same thing as a representation of the universal enveloping algebra. It extends naturally. Oh, and uh, mo moreover, such that, this is an important question, uh, condition, it sends one to one. So this element, it sends to the identity element, but identity is one because we are working with C. Some identity multiplication, which is one. So we will use this to prove that uh, one is not in the, this ideal. Okay. Uh, but let's see. To do that, we will use this representation. So first, whenever we have a representation, its corner is always an invariant subspace. So the corner of of the representation, uh, so so the so representation of U B, so it goes from here to the endomorphism of C. This is always uh, left ideal of U G. You, you can check easily. And since uh, by the condition, this is 1, but 1 is not equal to 0. That means what? 
This one is not in the kernel of uh, this map representation. Because if it is, then it should be zero. Okay? All right. Uh, so what are we now? Where are we now? So this is a left idea. If you can show that this kernel contains this set star, then we can say that J is contained in the kernel. Because this is the smallest left idea containing this, and kernel contains this, and it's, it's also a left idea, J must be contained in the kernel. And then we can conclude that one is not in the J, because one is not in the bigger set. So, but how can you show that? By construction, but by construction, corner of this uh, contains star. Why? Just plug in this uh, vector there, then you will get zero. Plug the vector here, you will get zero. For example, just to explain one thing, just uh, put this element. Because uh, we, we, we want to show that this is 0, this is 0 by this map. But this is what, why is this 0 by the... By uh, linearity, this is 1, right? But by definition, this is equal to uh. This is equal to 1 because of the proper proposition, so it's zero. And of course, this is zero because there h plus h is zero. So. so it vanishes at every point here, so it contains this set. And since j mu is the smallest left ideal, containing star, we can say that J mu is inside the corner of uh, this. And we know that one is not there. Therefore, one cannot be there. So, and that's the uh, proof, end of the proof. One is not in the bigger set. Now we are ready to prove uh, the two theorems of the st structure that tells us the structure of the Verma module. Mm, let's prove that. So we will prove proof of theorem 9.12. Second, we will prove this first because that's easier. Let me state this again because uh, probably uh, you have forgot. Highest weight cyclic representation with highest weight mu and highest weight vector v0, which is defini by definition the element represented by 1. We wanted to show this. Why? So for all h in the Cartan subalgebra, uh, one v zero is mm, h minus this. Uh, Okay. By definition, let's write, write step by step. By definition, if you have some element here, you put it inside. If you, you put it inside like that, and what is this? This is one uh, bracket one. So we really do what we are doing is that this. Okay. 
and this is zero because yeah zero because this part is in i mu so something is zero means uh, what's inside is in uh, is in this idea remember this is u q over i mu zero element here means element represented by uh, an element from i i mu so this means pi mu oh, therefore because this is zero thus pi mu h v zero equals uh, v zero so it is a uh, weight this is a weight vector with weight mu okay that's good and for all alpha to show that it's highest weight for past all positive root and positive uh, root vector or root vector of a positive root we have to show that this is zero but by definition again uh, this is one but again this is zero because yeah this part is in i mu this is a uh, uh, left ideal generated by this and this so it has to be there so this is zero so highest weight uh, six, uh, highest weight uh, yeah so it is highest weight we have to show that cyclic so for all element uh, what is this this is pi mu 1 that means this is the smallest left ideal containing this because everything here whenever we have that that has to be inside because that is one applied something so whenever uh, a module contains one it must contain gamma right so it is the smallest left ideal containing one any any left idea containing one would contain mu uh, this by uh, by this. In other words, uh, if you want any uh, left idea with one as an element contains. Because you know, idea say uh, I, it must be I. By this, it contains one. We multiply some element there, so it has to be I. So this is the proof of the second part of theorem 9.12. Highest weight cyclic with highest weight mu, highest weight vector mu uh, v zero. Okay, now we have to prove the first statement. Proof of theorem 9.12, first part. So what is the statement? The statement simply says that V0, which is the element uh, represented by 1, this is not 0 in W mu. But that means I. That means equivalently, uh, one is not an element in I mu. We have to show this. So why is this true? Uh, note, we have. I already mentioned this. Lie algebra is Dirac sum of n minus h plus n plus right but we we just uh, wrote this as b so it's the same thing as n minus plus b by definition b is the direct sum of these two so let's pick a basis coming from two bases uh, one from here the other from there so let y1 dot 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 yk 
z1 ta 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 zl be a basis for g such that uh, this part is a basis for n minus and this part basis for b then of course we will get a basis for g let's cons take these basis elements then uh, by the Brancare Borkov with theorem. So this is a ba basis, fixed basis in uh, Lie algebra. Then everything, uh, basis of UG can be written in terms of this basis. Uh, as follows uh, For all alpha in UG can be written uniquely uh, in this way. Let's say call star. Uh, alpha n1 dot 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 nk greater than equal to zero. So a finite sum where we have y1 n1 dot 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 y k n k and then a n one dot 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 n k where a n one dot 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 a n a so n k is an element in u b u b which is uh, sitting inside g. By the way, Brancari Borkov with theorem does not tell us uh, immediately like this, but it's not difficult. This is uh, homework, one of the homework problems. We can always write uniquely in this way some element or uh, in this order from n minus and an element in u b and uh, since alpha uh, not since suppose 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 alpha is in i mu and then see what happens. We want to show that in this case alpha cannot be one. Suppose that uh, then alpha is a linear combination of vectors of the form of the forms because i mu is the smallest left idea containing these uh, two vectors like uh, h minus um, mu in a product h stuff like that or x alpha for alpha in the positive root also in this form beta times h minus mu h1 and vectors of this form beta x alpha where beta is any element and h Cartan subalgebra alpha uh, r plus because this is generated by elements of this form, right? So we can always express alpha as a linear combination of this. It has to be a finite linear combination, of course. And if we write, but now beta is an element in UG. So if we write, so any element can be written in this way. We, let's write beta in this form, in this star. If we write uh, beta as in the star, then we can uh, express alpha as a linear combination of the vectors of this form, n1, nk, say b, n1, nk, h minus u h1 because we only express this we just attach this at, at, at the, at the oh. or for this again the same thing y1 n1 yk nk v1 n1 dot 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 nk uh, this part xk where this part over here 
is in U B, right? Because this part is in U B, like this, and this part is in U B. Is that right? Alpha can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. But now, uh, let's now look at this part up until this. This is obtained from this vector multiplied on the left by an element in UB. It is in JU. Because JU is the smallest left ideal in UB containing these vectors, these and these. So this part is also inserting inside JB. Is it okay so far? Now, so we express alpha, so basically what we are saying is alpha is sum of things like this, this and this. But alpha can be written uniquely in this way, right? Since uh, this is expression is unique, uh, if alpha is in I mu, in this expression, these, these element, this must be uh, not only in U B but also in J mu. Because we express, on this side we express in this way, but on the other hand we express alpha as a sum of things like that. But this, by the uniqueness, if this, everything is in J mu, it has to be J mu. It cannot be something else because of the uniqueness. The uniqueness is important and that is non-trivial coming, uh, non-trivial non fact coming from this PBW theorem. All right, but now uh, we are almost done. If one is in I mu, let's see what happens. Of course, we can write this. One is also an element in U G. We can write in, in this way. But uh, again, by uniqueness, only one term survives because you know, the expression must be this. 1 equals 1. We already expressed in that way. So, so uh, only one term uh, exists in star. Star expression of 1, which is just 1. And moreover, and uh, with in, the, in that case, this has to be 0, n1, nk, these. Because we have only one term, and that is exactly 1. That means this is uh, nothing. There's nothing there. This is just 1, so 0, 0, 0. And this has to be 1. That's the only way that we can write 1, because of the uniqueness. This and uh, 1 must be in j mu, because this is 1, and that has to be uh, J mu because of this. But what is J mu? J mu does not have 1 by the lemma. But by lemma, 1 is not there. So contradiction. That means 1 is not there in I mu at the first hand. So that's the end of the proof. So um, that's the proof. We will be using this fact one more time, uh, this, this thing, oh, maybe over here. We will use uh, one more time in the next proof. All right, so proof of theorem uh, what is that? The theorem says that this N oh, M 
nm v0 this of course these are exponents are non-negative integers this is a basis for the Verma module so this is a statement we want to show first first of all since uh, w mu is uh, highest weight cyclic representation these vectors span hmm. yeah, highest uh, way cyclic means everything uh, is obtained from u0 by applying uh, basis element but if you apply actually we have done this before if you apply x then if this is 0 if you apply h this is still v0 with some constant so all we need to do is to multiply y so it spans this so to show there is a basis we only need to show that they are linearly independent so, so enough to show or remains to show that these are these vectors are linearly independent. So to show that, suppose that we have a linear a combina a linear uh, relation n one dot 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 n m c n one dot 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 n m pi mu y1 n1 dot 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 suppose that we have relations like that of course this c n1 dot 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 n m is a constant or some constant or we suppose that we have this relation it's a finite sum of course we want to show that uh, each of these is zero but this means that because this is in uh, W Verma module, which is the quotient, that means uh, summation of these. Oh. Let's express this. This, by definition, is y1, n1, dot, 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 ym, nm, applied to 1. Uh, is zero. In other words, oh, this is if, if and only if, if and only if. Or let's write alpha. Define alpha to be uh, this part. C n one n m y one n one dot 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 y m n m. Oh, okay. It's not that important, but for some reason, I'm gonna express in this way. It's a constant, so it's always commute. You, you can put it ev everywhere. We want to show that this is inside uh, this. Right? We have to show this. The reason why I put this on the right is that I want to use this. For, uh, I want to compare that with this star. OK. Uh, Okay, so but what does this mean? Here, uh, this, this part, C1, this means, of course, CN1, da, 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 CNM, multiply 1 uh, as an element in uh, UG. Oh, no. UB. You can say UB. Because it's a constant, so this is in UB. That means this is already written in this star expression, like star. Okay. Compare that with this. Something with element in UB is written in this way. Okay. Uh, we know, like I said, if alpha is in I mu, everything here must be in J mu. So by the by uh, the fact proved earlier 
earlier meaning this this uh, if alpha is i mu then this part c and one this part must be in u b oh, no. of course that is in u b j mu But can it be true? But what is this? This is uh, n1, nm multiplied to 1. But we know that 1 is not, we know by lemma, 1 is not in j mu. That means this constant must be 0. Otherwise, we will get 1 there. Any non-zero multiply multiple of this is in there. One must be there. So vector space after all. So that means C n one. These all the constants must be zero. Everything is zero. That means they're linearly independent. So linearly vectors, the linearly independent. That's the proof. So in both of these two proofs, uh, important part, uh, the key property is that this is uh, unique. The expression is unique. That is a uh, fact coming from this PBW theorem. All right, so we showed that the Verma module is a cyclic, uh, high sway cyclic. And we we know the we know this basis. And in the next section, oh six irreducible. But the Verma modules are not quite yet irreducible. So irreducible to obtain irreducible, we have to take caution. So the goal here is show that. We want to show the first, this Verma module has a largest proper, proper uh, invariant subspace, say uh, U mu. And second, V mu. Uh, which is by definition because this has an invariance of space whenever we have an invariance of space we can define this quotient it's a well-defined module so it's a re representation this is irreducible with still highest weight mu three and then this will be in the next section uh, if mu is dominant integral then this is finite dimensional we will show that so in, after we show all of this we can say that for every dominant integral element there exists a finite dimensional representation, a irreducible representation with highest weight mu. So that will, so we will accomplish our uh, initial goal in this chapter. And the fact that I'm going to be using is again a homework. Uh, w mu is the direct sum. of its weight spaces. So it has a weight space decomposition. Just like the usual finite dimensional representation. And since uh, V0 is a weight vector, we know there is a weight vector. 
and it's a highest weight vector, so uh, this is the only weight vector up to scala, of course, having that uh, weight. So the dimension of the uh, weight space mu is 1. This is the only weight vector. So for any element in this uh, module, mm, we can define, you can define the following thing, the V0 com component of V to be uh, C times V0, where, of course, we can always write this as, because it's a direct sum of weight spaces, we can express uniquely as a sum of weight vectors. And this is a weight corresponding to, a weight vector corresponding to the weight mu, and we have this and some other linear combination of uh, weight vectors different from mu. Because this is a direct sum, it, the unique expression is unique. So we only consider the, the part coming from that weight space corresponding to the highest weight. Okay. Um, of course, it's not, not V0. Mm. So, uh, we have to define this first, and that's defined in this way. U mu uh, is defined to be the set of vectors V in the Fama module and such that the V0 component of V, oh, not V, but X1, Xn, V is uh, 0. For any collection of these vectors in uh, n plus. So this is a mm, direct sum of the root spaces of um, negative roots, right? Ah, uh, sorry, uh, positive roots or oh yeah, positive roots. Uh, that means, in other words, V is in this space if and only if V0 component of V is 0, first of all, because we can take the empty collection. And moreover, and a, uh, after repeated applications, of these xi elements from n plus, the v0 component uh, is still 0. Of course, these two v. So we have v initially, and then we keep applying this xi as many times as you want for all possible ways of selecting xi. And then the resulting vector still has 0 v0 component. That's the, we collect those vectors. Clearly, it contains zero. It is a vector space. And I'm going to prove that this u mu is an invariant subspace under the action of G. I think, yeah, I, think I can prove this today. Proposition 9.17, U mu is an invariant subspace 
of mu uh, under the action G. So, what does that mean? Whenever we have a vector here, and then if you apply any elements of this there, then the elements must be still inside. So, to do that, let's pick one element in U and one element from this Lie algebra. So, what do we want to show? We want to show that if you apply Z to this vector, it's still inside uh, there. But for simplicity, let's write uh, this just a, like an action. I don't want to keep this all the time. This means this means that uh, x1 dot 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 xl applied to z v has uh, v0 component equal to 0. For all x1 dot 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 any collection of vectors from n plus. We want to show this. This is the definition of element there. That means this will be inside there. Okay? Um, and by reordering lemma, we can write uh, x1 dot 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 xl z v in terms of y1 y j okay, sum, sum is not just a equal, it's sum of things like that okay, let's try let's try it in this way, this is this can be written as a sum of elements like this uh, y1 dot 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 yj h1 dot 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 hk x1 tilde, just to distinguish this from uh, x is over there, xm tilde applied to v. Where, of course, uh, yi's are in n minus, uh, he's are in h, x tilde's are in uh, n plus. Okay? We fix an ordered basis and then by using this, you know, the re reordering lemma, we can always express this as a sum of elements so that the element, the actions are applied in this way, in this par particular order. And since, uh, since V is in U, because we just take uh, this from U, U this means that uh, this part, X1 tilde, this has V0 component 0. It has to have uh, V0 component 0. That's the definition. And then uh, that means then this part, this uh, is a linear sum. So it does not have this. So it's a linear sum, but what is that? This is inside uh, this part, right? It is an element here, but it is a direct sum. It is a direct sum of weight spaces. So we we can write this as a sum of weight vectors, but among those weight vectors, v zero is not there because the component is zero. So uh, the linear sum of weight vectors. of weight but different from mu but different from mu if a, we have a weight different from mu it must be smaller than mu or lower than mu because mu is a highest weight smaller than mu but not equal to mu okay v0 is the only vector with weight mu so if we apply Uh, y i or h i to this vector, what do we get? 
it's still a sum of weight vectors, but the weight vectors, they have weight always uh, smaller than this. Because we, the weight, if you apply H to it, the weight stays the same. If you apply Y, the weight uh, is, gets lower. Um, then each weight vector of weight, say, alpha, which is, of course, uh, smaller than mu, uh, becomes a weight vector weight vector with weight still less than or equal to alpha, which is of course less than or equal to mu, strictly. Okay. That means the V0 component is still zero, because we cannot have V0. And that's the proof, that's the end of the proof. So everything after doing all of this, V0 does not present, does not, does not uh, exist there. So that's the proof. So this is an invariant subspace. So note that since U mu is an invariant subspace, this we can quotient this by uh, u, mu. This is a representation of g. And next time, we will show that this uh, is an irreducible representation. OK, so I will stop here. Uh, see you next week.